listeners and viewers. Welcome to the 12th episode of UN News Weekly, podcast of the UN Information Center, jointly with all UN agencies working in Uzbekistan. I'm Laila Fatah. Welcome to the show. United Nations in Uzbekistan organized a joint visit of the UN resident coordinator and heads of UN agencies in Uzbekistan to the Republic of Karakalpakstan to look closer at the implementation of the UN joint program, sustaining livelihoods affected by the Aral Sea disaster. And in fact, in 2012, uh, five UN agencies in Uzbekistan, including UNDP, UNFPA, UNESCO, uh, UNV and WHO, Um, started jointly implementing a UN joint program. Measures to reduce the level of subventions to local budgets. Interagency interaction, that is the name of the analytical report developed by a UNDP project working to reform the budget system in Uzbekistan. Human development promotion requires huge financial resources from the government. Two staff members of the United Nations Development Program in Uzbekistan shared their experience of the environmentally friendly initiative biking to work. So we encourage everyone who wants to join the green uh, movement or the cycling movement to do that as soon as possible. The main strategy of the UNDP and EU border management program in Central Asia is to promote the stability and security of Central Asian states through integrated border management and regional cooperation. We provide to the Uzbek border and law enforcement agencies the set of tools that are applicable for the modern border management. On April 11, for two days, UN resident coordinator, together with the UN heads of agencies, visited Karakal, Pakistan, to see the results of the UN joint program working to help the people living in the region. Let's listen to Zaki Abdrazakova, who is the outreach and communication specialist for the UN joint program on sustaining livelihoods of people affected by the Aral Sea disaster, talking about the visit. In 2012, uh, five UN agencies in Uzbekistan, including UNDP, UNFPA, UNESCO, uh, UNV, and WHO, um, started jointly implementing a UN joint program. Uh, the title of the program is Sustaining Livelihoods Affected by the RLC Disaster. Uh, the program is financed by uh, UN Trust Fund for Human Security, and um, it seeks to um, ensure economic uh, security, food security, health, and environmental security of the population of Karakal, Pakistan, affected by the environmental crisis. Uh, the human security approach is a holistic approach to development, and it uh, basically uh, involves uh, poverty alleviation, um, ensuring access to education and health care, environmental protection, and uh, promotion of human rights. Um, UN resident coordinator and um, heads of uh, and representatives of uh, WHO, UNICEF, UNESCO, um, UNAIDS, and UNFPA uh, visited um, Karakal, Pakistan uh, last week. Uh, for example, they visited um, two demonstration uh, sites in the Kandikul district, where they, um, where UN joint program uh, is uh, partnering up with uh, global environment facilities. A small grants program, and uh, we provided um, uh, laser land laser labeling equipment, which is expected to help uh, those local farmers um, reduce their consumption of water, or let's say um, improve the efficiency of water uh, consumption by 25%. Um, this was a good example of our uh, cross practice collaboration within uh, the UNDP. Um, then uh, they have also visited. Um, Lower Amudarya uh, State Biosphere Reserve, which is supported uh, by UNDP. Uh, and on the basis of this uh, nature reserve, a UN joint program is, uh, together uh, with UNESCO, is uh, planning to establish visitor information center, uh, which will um, help uh, boost tourism as well as uh, uh, employ the local people living in the surrounding area, uh, as well as um, it is also a part of UN joint program's effort to improve income generation opportunities in this area. A subvention is a fund allocated from the central budget to a local one. 
While doing research for an analytical report which is seeking to reduce subventions to local budgets, its authors visited all over regions of Uzbekistan and collected a huge amount of statistical data and information. Let's listen to Sanjar Babayev, a national consultant for the Budget System Reform Project, who will tell us about the analytical report, its findings and recommendations. Human development promotion requires huge financial resources from the government. And, but eight provinces in Uzbekistan with total population, 16 million people cannot afford it. And the central government uh, covers such gap uh, by intergovernmental transfers in form of subventions. But on the other hand, high level of subventions jeopardize fiscal sustainability in long term. For solving this dilemma, uh, strategies for enhancing tax uh, base should be developed. Uh, such strategies should uh, be based on material and in market infrastructure development, uh, economic decentralization, rural development, and so on. As preliminary calculations show that implement such strategies implementations can give annually 1.2 billion US dollars. It's uh, enough for equipping uh, by modern ICT equipment and uh, ensuring uh, internet access for one uh, for 10,000 educational organizations or equipping by up-to-date uh, diagnostics 3.5 thousand primary and secondary health care facilities in Uzbekistan. We both had various reasons to choose cycling over driving. Initially, environmental concerns were not our chief motivators, but the more we thought about it, the more obvious it became, says Komila Rahimova and Stanislav Bitiv from UNDP. Let's listen to their interview and hear how they explain the significance of going green and about how they choose the fun way to go to work. Uh, my colleague and I started cycling about a year ago. Uh, for me, this is something that I started doing as a child, but then I didn't have an opportunity to continue when I moved to Tashkent. So when my colleague decided to cycle to work, uh, I joined him. So far it's been great, although there are some small challenges, such as uh, we don't have separate uh, lanes for cycling, then uh, not all cars take us as uh, part of the transport uh, part of the track. Uh, obviously, uh, green, we should uh, be green uh, ourselves and uh, uh, show how it's cool to be green. When our colleagues saw that we started cycling, they actually first asked us very funny questions such as, uh, is your salary not enough? Or did you sell your car or what kind of fuel your bicycle uses? But then uh, when we continue to cycle every day, they actually became more interested. Uh, people wanted to know uh, seriously where they could get a bicycle, where they could buy a helmet, and uh, which roads are best for uh, leisure cycling and how to actually cross very difficult uh, streets. Uh, actually, I have a car, uh, but uh, this uh, two years I prefer to cycling to work and uh, uh, I think that it's much better, you know. So. Uh, we usually take a route in the morning, which means uh, fresh air and if we go through the park we can also uh, like see green grass and trees and sometimes even a uh, squirrel. Well, I haven't seen him since there is one. In the evening, of course, it's, uh, there's more smog and um, there's bigger traffic, everybody's going home and you're sort of tired to cycle up the road, but it's still you have very good feeling of physical exercise and when you put your bike back, you really want to go back to it in the morning. So we encourage everyone who wants to join the green uh, movement or the cycling movement to, to do that as soon as possible. Borders need to be open for legitimate trade of goods 
and transit of people. But borders need to protect from weapons, drugs, and other illicit movements. To address the problem of slow demarcation of borders, lack of resources, new migration flows, and others that came about after the fall of Soviet Union, EU, together with UNDP, launched the Border Management Assistance Program in Central Asia. So now is the special guest section of our program. Tune in. So in our special guest section today, we have Alfia Musina, who's the head of the Border Management in Central Asia program. Welcome, Alfia. Thank you. It's good to have you in our show. So it'll be very interesting for our listeners and viewers to learn more about the Border Management BOMCA program. What is it all about? Well, BOMCA, standing for Border Management Program in Central Asia. I'm responsible for the Uzbek office. This is a regional initiative funded by the European Union and implemented by the UNDP. We have offices in all five Central Asian states. This year, we will be celebrating our 10th anniversary of our uh, efforts in the Central Asia region. In Uzbekistan, we provide to the Uzbek border and law enforcement agencies the set of tools that are applicable for the modern border management techniques. Uh, those border management techniques that we bring from European Union, the best practices, the best scenarios of how to protect borders, how to secure borders and how to make them open at the same time. What we do in BOMCA is we demonstrate the best practices of the European Union uh, and bring them to Uzbekistan realities, to Uzbek realities through training and best practices which we bring from European Union, we demonstrate to the Uzbek border agencies the advantages of effective and efficient border management that borders which are secure from threats and open for legitimate trade and transit. So it's amazing to know that the border management program has been working for 10 years and congratulations with your anniversary. And it's a good thing that the EU experience is now being brought to Uzbekistan and other Central Asian countries in terms of border management. Uh -huh. Alfia, the border management program is celebrating its 10th anniversary. Tell our listeners and viewers about the significance of the program and why it's important to implement this project. We all know that borders have always been uh, on the top of security concern of every state. Today we live in the globalized world where the provision of quality goods and services depend on open borders with simplified border crossing procedures. This simplified border crossing procedures often create incentives for illegitimate security concerns at the border. These range from the threats to, of international terrorism, uh, all sorts of different uh, religious um, insurgent groups at the borders, to drugs and organized crime. Therefore, I believe that the security concern of Uzbekistan, the security threats of Uzbekistan, they need to be addressed in a proper way. This is why, for development of this country and its security, we need the borders that can maximize the benefits and minimize the risks. The borders that are rationally open and reasonably secure. This is the fundamental of philosophy of BOMCA. This is what we do on a daily basis. Alfia, tell our listeners and viewers about the activities, specific things on the ground that you do. You mentioned trainings. What else is there? And tell us about the results that the BOMCA program has achieved throughout these 10 years. In these 10 years, we have been able to spend more than 7 million USD to Uzbek technical assistance programs. We have started from infrastructure and capacity building. Technical uh, assistance to Uzbekistan was about building new facilities for the border agencies, training of the dogs and training of the border officers at the borders, practical both training and theoretical trainings in the classrooms, we have been transformed from hard security program to soft security. Now we basically, what we do now is we train people to the new 
uh, modern border management techniques and tools, these experiences that we bring from European Union to the uh, Uzbek border agencies, all sorts of uh, skills training, all sorts of specialized trainings to be able to upgrade the knowledge of the Uzbek border offices in the integrated border management. In simple terms, the integrated border management means cooperation at every possible level, at the interstate level, interagency level, and between the agencies. The cooperation is about everything now. I personally believe that the key result is the fact that we have been able to engage the Uzbek partners into the dialogue in very sensitive uh, field of border security, because border security, uh, whatever different people may say, is very sensitive, is very strategic, and is very hard to start negotiations with, with the partners. Therefore, the major thing that we have been able to achieve in Uzbekistan is we engage the partners into the dialogue and maintain this dialogue at the very highest level. We have been able to build trust in our program, to demonstrate the results of our program in Uzbekistan, and we have been able also to break the ice and to start a completely new program uh, for implementation in Uzbekistan. In these 10 years, we have been able to uh, build a completely new training center located in Termez area, that's the strategic border crossing point with Afghanistan. We have been able to build up to seven uh, construction and infrastructure uh, objects like the border crossing points, the border outposts located in different parts of Uzbekistan, including Fergana Valley, including southern part of Uzbekistan as well. In Uzbekistan, we have been able to upgrade the level of the expertise in uh, academic background of the facility which is called the National Dog Training Center under the Customs Committee. That's the leading institution in Uzbekistan, just like in the entire Central Asia and CIS region. This institution, this center in particular, has been um, given the status of the World Customs Organization Regional Training Facility. From now on, they will be able to organize and arrange trainings for the entire regional um, customs and border offices to train in different fields of expertise, including the search for drugs and explosives. So the program is quite extensive, it's regional, and it focuses on cooperation. Alfia, tell us about the plans ahead. Well, the plans ahead so far we have been able to uh, negotiate and draft the future uh, project FISH, as we call it in the EU, the project document which will be uh, focusing on the next phase of BOMCA, that's BOMCA 9. We hope to start it as of the next year, 2014. That will run for two years, hopefully. Now the EU, our partners in EU, are negotiating this project document with their counterparts in the European Union member states. Once it is done, we will be able to start the implementation of, the pro of this program in the region of Central Asia, including in Uzbekistan. We hope the government of Uzbekistan will endorse further um, follow-up of the previous phases of BOMCA. Alfia, that was a very interesting discussion about a very serious topic. We wish you and the team good luck and look forward to welcome you on our show again. Well, thank you, Lilo. Liked our episode? You can find these and many other stories in the upcoming editions of UN News Weekly. For more stories on UN in Uzbekistan, visit www.un.us. For social media, stay tuned for facebook.com forward slash unik Tashkent. See you soon. <laughs>